Good morning, everybody. Today, this lecture video is about lesson 4.2, the interval estimate. And we start by saying our memory verse. It's found in Leviticus 27, verse 2. It says, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When a man shall make a singular vow, the presence shall be for the Lord by thy estimation. Last meeting, you have learned about the point estimate. And for this session, you'll learn about the interval estimate. You'll learn to compute the interval estimate of the population. Let's start with a guessing game. Now, you make a point estimate and also the interval estimate. Remember, the point estimate is a singular numerical value, while the interval estimate comes in a range of values. So try to give your point estimate and your interval estimate of the following. A, income of your parents. B, distance between the administration building to the gate. C, the age of Kathleen Bernardo. D, the fourth quarter grade in stats and prob. And E, the Philippine population. Now, let's have a very brief review on what an interval estimate is all about. An interval estimate is a range of values where most likely the true value will fall. For example, last meeting, I asked you to make a guess of your teacher's age. So your interval estimate can be 25 to 35. If the true value is 30, then we say that the true value or the parameter is found in the interval estimate. But remember, the parameter may or may not be included in the interval estimate. Now, what's a confidence level? The confidence level reflects a degree of confidence that the interval estimate contains the true parameter. For example, if your guess was 25 to 35, how confident are you that the real answer is there? That tells you about your confidence level. There are three commonly used confidence intervals. We have the 90%, the 95%, and the 99%. If we have our Z table, you'll realize in a two-tailed test that the 90% or the 90 percentile has a Z score of plus and minus 1.65. For 95%, the Z score is plus and minus 1.96. And for 99%, the Z score or the Z values are negative plus and minus 2.58. I were you, you simply memorize these values because we will use these ones again and again over the next lessons. Again, 90% plus and minus 1.65. 95% plus and minus 1.96. And for 99%, it's plus and minus 2.58. Now, how do we solve for the interval estimate? If the given is a population mean, then that's mu, or for sample mean, that is X bar, or the point estimate. Plus and minus Z of alpha over two, this is the critical coefficients or the Z values. So what's the possible value here? 1.65, 1.96, or 2.58. Then sigma, that's the standard deviation, over square root of N. N is our sample size. Now let's start, not, not yet. Let's go first to the margin of error. 
The margin of error tells us the difference between the observed sample mean and the true value of the population mean. It's represented in this formula. If we go back to our estimator or the formula, this is the point estimate plus and minus the margin of error. So what will happen? If this is your point estimate, if you add the margin of error, you'll have the upper confidence limit. If this is your point estimate, if you subtract the margin of error, you'll have your lower confidence limit. Now, what, could, what are these lower confidence limit and this upper confidence limit? For example, when I ask you to guess my age, your answer can be from 25 to 35. The 25 is what we call the lower confidence limit, while the 35 can be your upper confidence limit. You might ask me, what's the real answer, ma'am? The true value of the parameter is 30. So we say that there is a margin of error of 5. You add 5 to 30, you will have 35, the upper confidence limit. You subtract 5 from 30, you will arrive to 25 or the lower confidence limit. Now let's go back to our lecture note. Now, how do we solve interval estimate for a group data? There are four steps. Step one is to solve for the point estimate. We have learned that last meeting. Next, solve for the standard deviation. Then we determine the Z value using the given confidence level and we'll compute for the upper confidence limit and the lower confidence limit. Let's take example number one. 10 random learners were weighed. Estimate the true value of the average weight of learners enrolled in the class. Then you need to solve for the interval estimate, I'm sorry, this should be at 95% confidence level, not 96. Please edit that. So what do we do? Last meeting, we have learned that we'll solve for the point estimate. And that is by adding all numbers divided by the number of entries. So our point estimate is 50.1. Next, let's solve the standard deviation. So this is now our X, our score. This is our point estimate, 50.1. And in the last column, we subtract this one. We subtract the raw score by the point estimate, and the answer will square it. I suggest you limit your answers to two decimal places. So after subtracting them and squaring the difference, here's the answer. Then you need to add them all. So the sum is 298.9. Next, we will divide the sum of the third column by add by the squad. So here's the formula in solving for the standard deviation. So the sum, that's 298.9, divided by y10, because there are 10 entries. So 10 minus 1. So we have, that's 9. The answer is 5.76. So we now have our standard deviation. Step 3. The given confidence level is 95%. Now we go back to our Z values for 95%. For 95%, our Z values are plus and minus 1.96. So that will be for step three. Next, let's go to step number four. Let's compute for the upper confidence limit and the lower confidence limit. So this is our point estimate, 50.1. Then 
our Z value is 1.96. We use the plus for the upper confidence limit while you use the minus for the lower confidence limit. Our standard deviation is 5.76 all over the square root of N, that's 10. So if you'll have that, our upper confidence limit is 53.67. And if you'll do the subtraction, our lower confidence limit is 46.53. Thus, the interval estimate is 46.53 kilograms to 53.67 kilograms. Now, how about for the group data? Let's use the cocoa juice case, and we'll have the same four steps. First, the point estimate, second step, the standard deviation, the third step is the Z value, and the fourth step is the upper confidence limit and the lower confidence limit. So this is the same as last meeting for the cocoa juice case. Um, I'm using the same case so that your steps will be continuous. You don't need to solve for the point estimate again. The question is, at 99% confidence level, what is the interval estimate of the population mean? So let's start. First, solve for the point estimate. Using the Excel file, we arrived to 497.83. Next, let's solve for the standard deviation. Now let me share with you another screen. Here's the Excel file. Now, for you to have it easier, let's write the point estimate here because you'll subtract it from the sample mean, right? So that's 497.83. You copy it all. Next is we have the sample mean minus the point estimate, then we need to square it. That's carrot. Now, so we say, how do you write that in formula? That's equals, open parenthesis, the sample mean minus the point estimate close parenthesis, then we need to square it. To square, we need to use the caret sign that's above number six, two. It means square it by two. So here's our answer. You want it to do the two decimal places? There. Then you could have the same formula that's equals, open parenthesis, the sample mean minus the point estimate, close parenthesis, caret squared, two decimal places. Then, or you can just drag it and you'll arrive on the same answer. Or here, I have it in four decimal places. Actually, the more or in your lecture notes, we have four decimal places. Actually, the point is the more number of places, decimal places, the more accurate your answer is. So if you go back to our Excel file and you want to have four decimal places, no problem. Then that's equal. So we need to have the summation of this. Here's the answer for the summation. So let's solve for the standard deviation. Let's go back to our lecture notes. So this is 1.6134 divided by Y6 because there are only six sample groups. So not base it on the number of entries, that's 10. Base it on sample groups if you'll have it in group data. So six minus one, the answer for our standard deviation is 0 
Now, at 99% confidence level, our Z values are plus and minus 2.58. Let's solve for the upper confidence limit. Here's the point estimate, that's 497.83. Then our Z score is 2.58, that's minus 2.58 for the lower confidence limit. Our standard deviation is 0 0.57, then over square root of six. Why six? Again, there are six sample groups. So the answer is, 498.43. And if you have the lower confidence limit, the answer is 497.23. So we state them in a range. We say the interval estimate is 497.23 ml to 498.43 ml. That's all for this morning. Have a good time answering.